Hi there, welcome to my studio. Thanks for checking out this video. My name's Siobhan. On this channel, I share videos about a dynamic and expressive approach to drawing the figure. In today's video, I want to share the process of a quick figure study in ink. I recently decided to experiment with a new drawing tool that's this uh, pen and nib. And in today's video, I want to talk about what it means to explore new drawing tools, what I learned in this process and how I think that can help you in your drawing. Plus, I want to share my top tip for getting free flowing and loose line work into your drawings. If you're new to this channel, thanks for being here. Every week I share my own process for figure drawing. I share tips and techniques on how to get more expressive and dynamic in your work. So if you're interested in figure drawing and if you want to learn how to develop an expressive and gestural style, then definitely subscribe here so that we can stay in touch. So a couple of weeks ago, I tried out drawing with a brush pen and I'll also leave a link to that video if you want to check out the process of using a brush pen to, to draw the figure. But following on from that, I really wanted to experiment with a pen and nib. So that's what I'm using today. And along with this, I'm also using some Winsor & Newton ink, which is water soluble. So it's, that's going to be good for making a light wash, which I used later on in the drawing. The one thing I will mention is that the paper I'm using is probably not the best paper. It's the Hanamura etching paper and that's great for like an ink wash or any kind of wet media. It's not the best for pen and nib because it is a little bit textured and fibrous. So you might want to try using a smoother paper yourself. So when starting out the drawing, the first thing that I did was try to first of all, lightly map out the figure with a charcoal pencil. This is a really light gesture on the page. So it's just really about finding the figure, making sure the proportions are correct and making sure that the scale was correct so that the whole figure would fit on the page. So these lines are really light. They'll hardly be seen in the end drawing. It's just a very rough guide. I also decided to do this first because it's very daunting to start a drawing with ink right out of the gate and not have any guide whatsoever. So this beginning process or this underdrawing, you know, puts marks down on the paper and it feels like the drawing is already underway. So once I captured a sense of the figure, um, and really, this is just a sense in my head, more so than on the page. But once I had a fair idea, then I was able to switch over to the pen and nib. Now, a disclaimer, I'm very new to drawing with this. So please, if there are any, you know, purists or professional pen drawers out there, best to maybe look away now. Uh, I'm likely not using this right, but this is exactly where I wanted to say that if you're experimenting with a new drawing tool, or if you're trying to figure out for yourself which drawing tool is right for you, then personally, I think the emphasis should be on experimenting. There are many great channels here that will teach you how to use the pen and ink uh, correctly and I'll link a few below that I found that I found really interesting. Generally speaking what I always try to encourage students is to experiment with drawing tools in order to find out what works for you and what you resonate with the most. I think it's great to just pick up a drawing tool and explore the capabilities in your own way. This approach is not really about a step-by-step -step way of drawing something or you know, it's not about there is only one way to draw. There are many ways to draw and many ways to use different kinds of drawing tools. So for me, I found this pen a really beautiful and expressive thing to draw with. It gives me 
like a lot of capabilities to draw loose searching lines, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, but it also allows for really slow, careful and graceful line. However, it also very weirdly gives me a lot of unpredictability, which I think is really important in, in my drawing in particular. I like it if I've got a little bit less of control over a drawing. Uh, then I sort of feel that the drawing is going to come through with mistakes and accidents, and it kind of gives it a much more interesting quality. So I would encourage you if, in your drawing practice that if you're finding there's mistakes and and challenges in the tools that you're working with, just consider how you can weave that into your final drawing and maybe accept those mistakes or those accidents that are happening as part of the process and maybe even as part of the final drawing. It's all up down to personal taste, but I really find that I love seeing the thought process in a drawing or seeing the challenges that the artist faced in the drawing itself, rather than erasing out or taking away those um, that journey that the artist went on. I love it when I can see that in the final drawing. And then I wanted to talk as well about drawing free flowing lines. I think it's a great way to get expressive in your drawing. This notion of just letting your lines flow around rather than drawing you know, specific outlines or specific shapes. Because with that approach, you can often end up with a flat drawing. It takes a little bit of bravery to be free flowing with ink because you can't erase the lines that you make. So I, what, what I want to stress is something that might be quite hard to explain on a YouTube video. So let me know in the comments if this doesn't make sense. But what I wanted to say is this. If you are fully committed 100% to looking at what it is you're drawing and really relying on your observation, then as you draw and make searching or flowing lines around the figure, those marks are, are going to ring true in the final result, even if they're not calculated or measured. It's not really about trying to draw a thing. It's about trying to follow the movements of your eyes with your drawing tool. In this case, it's the pen. So I want you to try this out for yourself. It really works best if you're drawing from life, but you can also apply this approach to drawing from a photo reference. Just fix your eyes on your subject and follow what you're looking at with your pencil or your pen. This makes what I call a truthful drawing because it really captures what it is that you're looking, looking at, but more so it captures the way that you look. So once, once I had made all of my searching lines, um, what I did then was switch over to a brush and I just used water to sort of push into the, the ink, the lines of ink. I wanted to follow the shadows across the forms to give the drawing some dimension. But I will say it's really tricky to do this. If the ink goes into the wrong place, there's really not much you, what, there's not much you can do about it. Um, and shadows can make or break a drawing. They're so important to get right if you are going to commit to doing shadow shapes. I think with lines, you can get away with being <laughs> searching and loose. Uh, but when it comes to shading, uh, you have to get those shadows in the right place. So finally, what did I learn from this process? Well, I think I need to think about that thing of less, of less is more. There is a tendency, and I think we all do this as figure drawing artists, to want to draw the entire figure and map out every tiny bit of it, all the details, the fingers, everything, every outline. But looking back, I feel, especially with this medium, there's really an opportunity here to be very economical in my mark making and to try and be in really intentional about the lines that I make. What I'm going to be taking from this and what I would uh, suggest you could consider as well in your work is Try to think about what is the most important thing that needs to be said in a drawing. In this case, I think I could have said a little bit less and it might have been a bit more impactful. But at the end of the day, I was still 
pleased with the process and excited by this uh, new drawing tool that I've found. So I'm going to continue to develop this as much as I can. So thanks so much for watching this video and for watching it all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Please give this video a like if you think it's worthwhile. Um, definitely subscribe so that we can stay in touch. If you do make a drawing of this pose, tag me on Instagram so I can see your work. And let me know in the comments below if you use a pen and nib yourself. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if you've got any thoughts or any advice on this drawing tool. And one thing before I sign off, earlier today I was looking at the subscriber count on this channel and it's creeping up to 20k, which is amazing. So I was thinking that maybe if we hit that round number, maybe I should do a bit of a giveaway um, and give this drawing. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. So that's it for me. I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.